Hello, it's a Monday and it's just gone three o'clock in the afternoon. I thought I would today catch up on all the recordings um, stored on the uh, Sky Q box, beginning with Big Sleep, starring Humphrey Bogart, Bogart and Bowen Bacall. I've not, it's a classic film, I'm sure you've heard of it. I've never seen it until today, would you believe? And it's the one Humphrey Bogart film I've been waiting to watch for years, for the last couple of years when I started to, well, when I had The Virgin, I used to have a wish list that if, if Humphrey Bogart film appeared in the TV guides it would be called it regardless and this was the only film that that seemed to um, eluded me until when they record it um, nearly a month ago so I watched it today and it was brilliant it was for it for a film of 1946 I believe it was it was a ahead of its time Um, very, it was very good. It was a mystery, a who done it sort of thing, and of course your grit. That's one thing that will keep you interested in, in in a film is the who done it aspect. Who did what and uh, why? A bit like Chinatown, I thought, because there were. Uh, I, I can't even tell you. It was all spoiled. The, the China Chinatown. Um, it would be a spoiler for Chinatown. But yeah, it was very good. Um, what can I say about it? Um, performances was good. The writing was good. The directing was good. The locations was good. Everything. It. It, it was. Um, there weren't too many scenes or scenery, but it was almost like a little play, but sort of you know, getting the actors to move around because it was like in one spot. So you get them moving around, it keeps you uh, interested. Um, yeah. I, one of the things that stood out was when it reached, there was a point in the film, it's, it, it all tidied up nicely and I thought, okay, we can stop here, the film's ended. But when I looked on the time, the timeline, we were only halfway through the film. So everything came to a solution halfway and apparently there was still another hour of the film to go and then you got these new, um, some extra characters cropping up because uh, I don't want to spoil it but um, you know it felt like it was the end because he did the job the client was satisfied but I think he still had one or two questions to ask and he was you know reluctant to just take the money and go as it were but yeah it was a very good film I'm glad I saw it and I like Humphrey Bogart in those kind of films you know where he's the uh, He's he's a kind of gentleman, but he's more rough, like a rough gentleman, and people respect him for that. Like in Casablanca and Key Largo, and that other one, the Maltese Falcon. So it was uh, in that sort of group of films. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And after that, I thought I'd watch the next one on the list. So I'm going down from the oldest recording to, to now. And the next one was Easy Rider. Now, that's in two parts because on the scheduling, there's a bit in the middle. Now, the bit in the middle is Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino, talking about Easy Rider. Um, 
So they booked the film up in, a, in an advert, in an ad break, to have him talk about Easy Rider. And of course, to record Easy Rider meant it's in two parts. So when I recorded it, and I saw it's only for an hour, I was puzzled. And then when I looked, there was more recorded, more showings of it. It turned that there was two on the same day, different an hour apart. So I recorded both of them. I'm now thinking, I've noticed that when you record an episode of a program, it seems to record the next one, like a series link. So I'm thinking maybe it would have automatically recorded this, recorded the second one as part of a series. So I need to check, I need to do some research into that. I haven't seen all of um, Easy Rider. Funny enough, I'm actually at the halfway point. I've seen the first part and I thought I'd check up on the export of Saturday's video. Again, I'm two days behind. And, uh, but why? No, that's not even that actually. I was watching the second part and then it's the part where Jack Nicholson comes into the film and suddenly my eyes are weighing, getting really heavy. So I thought I'd, I'll stop it here and take a break and I don't even know what time that was when I broke, but it's, when I woke up it was free. 3 p.m. So just trying to work it out. Half eleven. Half twelve. So I've had about an hour to half, hour to ninety minute nap, which I don't believe. So now I'm going to watch the video that I've just uploaded, and then watch the second part of Easy Wider. I've already had my made on toast, so I'm not ready for chili con carne just yet. So what I will do then is. Um, then I'll delete the files, transfer the files while watching something else that I've recorded and then I should be rested enough to start on yesterday's video so that's the plan and of course you saw earlier what's on later so I'm looking forward to that now we're back, now we're starting autumn properly now with University Challenge followed by only connect which will probably go on into uh, spring next year so some things to look forward to It's time for a break from the editing. I've been going quite quite a pleasing edit, I thought. It's been going quite smoothly. Yeah. Anyway, that aside, I've noticed that the playback's getting a bit laggy. So I've closed the app, uh, closed the software down, the editor, and decided to do a clean up of the C drive, the hard disk. And optim an optimization and shut down. And I thought maybe it's uh, best to have a break now. So I'm going to have chili con carne on toast and coffee.
Toffle Award, the Golden Lion, went to Alfonso Cuaron's Roma, which went on to win <coughs> multiple Oscars. So it's a fascinating insight into the big films that we'll be seeing on our cinema screens this autumn. And who are the big names making an appearance or not making an appearance? Critic Jason Solomons is fresh back from Venice to tell us. Welcome, Jason. Um, the film getting most attention this year seems to be Todd Phillips' Joker. At first, oh God, another film about superheroes. This is about the Batman villain, the Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix. It has been getting great reviews. Deserved? Rave reviews. I was in a... What did the old used to have? Three seconds. Uh, did the old used to be spelled with the letter before the answer? They did not, but always worth having a guess. Suits, you've got a chance for bonus. We believe the letter before the card on precedes Hollywood. Yes, it does. Not right. I've just finished editing yesterday's video. And of course it's now exporting. I'll check it in half an hour just to make sure it's it hasn't crashed. So now I'm just going to chill. I've got a little Google Keep of names that I need to search on Sky Q to see if they've got any films coming up in the following week so I can pre-record it. Then I'm going to watch Wilbert Wars. I saw in reverse order University Challenge, Only Connect. So good to have those two on. It's it's just a real pleasure to watch inter intellectual quiz shows like those two. Uh, going back in time, Easy Rider. I saw that. It's uh, it was quite good, quite good. It was like a road movie because they they were on their bikes and they're going from I don't know from California to New Orleans I think, and they there's a lot of culture. It's 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 a, it's a counter culture movie, and It it was of the time, 1969. So you had a bit of flower power there, and uh, and of course those southern states are a bit. You know they're very pro uh, con confederacy. So those the two cyclists who are sort of free free agents. You know like. Uh, Part of the flower power movement in a sense, they're just wild and so they got they became they got targeted by these certain people in the southern states. But uh, and then end up I think in New Orleans and there's carnivals. But uh yeah, which uh Richard Jack Nicholson. I saw Jack Nicholson in it and it was very good in it. I think it's mostly improvised. And I think Jack Nicholson held his own if he did improvise. Yes, I saw that. And then, of course, before that, it was Big Sleep. I think the next one to watch is... Might be a Jeff Bridges film called... Um... Should take me too long to find it. Here we go. The Vanishing. I think it's mostly a Kaifa Kaifa Sutherland, Sandra Bullock film. And Jeff Bridges might have a, a, a supporting part, but he's in that film. And then, the, and then there's another Jeff Bridges film called Wild Bill. This is all in descending order. And I think we want to widows. It's being repeated on Talking Pictures TV. So I saw all those. So what I'm going to do now is watch Robert Wars.